Hello and welcome to the gallery. This time we're gonna paint the kid past Chaos Knight that I built a few weeks ago. <laughs> Like I said, this is not a really complex thing that we're going to do here today. We're going to paint a knight. So let's just jump straight into it. Uh, a little bookkeeping first. I'm having a giveaway. I will be going further into detail about that a little bit later on in the video. But first, let's start by painting the metal skeleton. We will be starting this from a black undercoat. And we are going to start by airbrushing a little bit, both on this and on the armor panels. We'll go over that a little bit later with the armor panels. But we're starting out with uh, lead belcher mixed in with some black ink. And then I'm gonna sand it all over this uh, dark metallic with uh, just lead belcher to get a little bit of a lighter metallic on top. Of course, for the skeleton, you c it are, it's perfectly fine to just use a dry brush and a silver or lead belcher or some metallic colors because if you just dry brush over the black skeleton, metallic skeleton, it will look pretty damn good and with a little bit of washes here and there, it's gonna look great. I'm gonna also do this for the weapon arms, but of course the metallic bits that I have on the armor plating that will all be brushed on, mainly because it's not really fitting to for my expertise in this thing or lack thereof to actually use airbrush on the armor trims and stuff like that so now we're in the zenithal stage of the two metallic shades just hitting the top of it where i think light will be more prominent to show which of course is not there because we will have panels over it but hey you live and you learn so we're just squirting a little bit of paint here and there and especially focusing on, like I said, the more raised details, the joints of the legs, the top portions of the guns, the panels around the skeletal armor metallic face thing mask, which is not really technically a head because the guy's inside, but you know. Then I'm just gonna add some gold into the pot and I'm gonna spray a few select areas. There will be some overspray, but I'm not too worried about that because we will be dry brushing a little bit later on and we will also be putting some washes and grit and grime over it so all the overspray will just fade into the complete feel of the thing. We're just gonna find some spots to have a different tone to the metallic skeleton that's underneath all the uh, armor plates and all the weapons, just so it's not too bland. So there are some hints of other colors going around here and there. Now once everything is dried after that, I'm gonna mix Typhus Corrosion and Agrax Earnshade into a pot, and we are going to just handsomely press that almost everywhere. It's gonna go most over most of the model because we want this guy to look really grimy and gritty he's not well maintained and the little maintenance he has is just squirting can after can after can of oil on him so everything moves somehow once that has dried we start with a little bit of dry brush some silver over most of it we're not gonna go too big into the recesses they can be dark we're gonna dry brush from the top and down a little bit here and there where we will go up mainly because we can't go down there but we're just grabbing a little bit of those top edges to get some extra edge highlighting in a quick and simple way and painting the entire skeleton in this way takes a really 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 short time and that's what we go for here because even though it's a big model it is quite a simple model it's huge but it's got very few key elements that you have to focus on i'm putting some of that silver over places where i think i'm gonna have it look like it's in a different color more vibrant so the eyes for some strange reason the corner of those pipes and all those little bulbs and globules on his weapons and then after i finished with that i'm gonna 
continue on with that same feeling, putting some undercoats underneath what I will have in a more bright color. So white color here into the those parts of the guns, whatever they are called, the grills, who knows? Most people do. I don't, don't really care. And now we're going to put some interesting color into those uh, highlight into those special places where I put color. So green eye lenses, this will fit really well with the entire color scheme I'm going for here. And red there because of reasons. I have no idea what the reasons are why I did this, but hey, why not? It looks okay. And then we're going to start with yellow on uh, the gun bits, and we will focus that into a different hue a little bit later on with some wet blending of the contrast paints. And wet blending with contrast paint can be quite fun. So we start with yellow on the bottom of the plasma coil. Hey, I got it. And then we're going to add a little bit of orange over the top of that, which we will blend together. And that will make it look like the, the light is coming from beneath where the heat is. So it'll be a little bit more powerful. Yeah, sure, let's go for that. That's a thing. And as you can see, I'm also going to make a little bit of scort marks on all the gun barrels, as well as the uh, exhaust pipes of the model. We're starting out with blue to get that blooming of the metallics. And once uh, that has dried, we're going to finish it off with a little bit of null oil just right on the tip of all those exhausts and gun barrels and all, all of those little bits just to get that soot feeling going on it. And I, all of these little details, I think they give it uh, the biggest uh, uh, flavor because that makes it feel more used, more alive. We're also going to put a little bit of null oil on the top of the plasma coil just to have it a little bit darker and sooty and shadowy on top. Now that the metal skeleton is finished, let's uh, go a little bit into the giveaway I talked about earlier. A few weeks ago I made a small video where I talked about having a giveaway and started the thing, actual, actual thing. It's a fairly simple thing. Use the hashtag in the comments below for this video and every upcoming video until I have the new Chaos Knights fully painted. The hashtag is let chaos reign in one word and you are in the pot. Now that that's done, let's go back into painting the knight and this time we're gonna start on the armor plates and all the little fun bits that make a knight a knight. Now, what I want to go for here is a little bit more of a natural look to the armor panels. I'm going for more brown bone khaki color so i was gonna try something different out by using these three different tones that are quite similar the flat earth the khaki and the bone ish uh, tan dak tan is it called from vallejo and they work really really well together and they go on really smoothly and they mix together on the model really well but you have to be careful when you are using this method that I'm using if you want to get a similar result for some strange reason you have to be careful that at the worst possible moment have your airbrush compressor completely melt out and start smoke then you can sit around and wait for a few days while you think about all the stuff you've done wrong in your life and a hope to some higher beings that you will end up with a new compressor. And that's what I did. And that's how we got this lovely, lovely uh, paint job done. I mean, you could skip a few steps in that uh, thing, but I would not recommend it. I would recommend going the whole uh, nine miles with that. Now we're starting to get a little bit of more highlights going on top of the brown and we're always adding a little bit lighter color and a little bit lighter color and we end up with this nice tan off white color which I really dig but it's looking a little bit too smooth and usually that's not a problem but for this grimy chaos guy I'm making that is actually somewhat of an issue so we have to fix that a little bit and the best way to fix that is to just 
dirty it up and uh, figure out a way to make things look not as nice as they are so we are going to do that with contrast paints and you could of course use oil based uh, washes and stuff like that and then take it off with mineral spirits and stuff like that but i didn't, just didn't feel like it i want to do it simple even though i'm using airbrush and blending with airbrush but you know what i mean so i'm using snake bite leather and i'm mix thinning that out with a little bit of contrast medium and then i'm just putting it into the recesses wetting my brush you could use the water you could also use god forbid your mouth and then once it's wet you just fade it out a little bit to get that grimy look but try to keep a little bit of the main color that i put down trying to keep that a little bit showing because we put a lot of work into it but we still want it to look a little bit tacky and grimy and you have to just do this to all the panels and my god there's so much many panels especially on this uh, tyrant guy i mean the regular knights they got panels but the tyrant he has this big burly top armor plate which really really has a lot of stuff going on it and i didn't help by adding a hell of a lot more stuff to go on it but just to grime it up and then wet it a little bit away and don't be afraid to use your fingers and brush it off a little bit but we're really getting this dirty ground look going with this then just a little bit of null oil here and there going mostly into the panel uh, recesses and there weren't as many as i was expecting i mean of course there are quite a few but considering how many panels there are there aren't that many and just have to be careful that if it goes overboard take it away immediately because otherwise it will stain it in this black color which is not really fitting with all the tanny brown color that we have going there because it's just a different tonal value it has more blue tint to it in my opinion and it doesn't really go that well with everything else now we have this damn thing there's a lot of trim on this model and the only way to really paint it is just to paint it with a brush and it's a slog this is one of the smallest panels of the model and i decided to start with that throw it on the ground because i was pissed off but still continue on and you just have to brush and brush and brush and once you think you're done oh no you're not done because you still have to do the edges of everything we don't really have to do the inside because nobody's going to see that which is a blessing and there is like i said a lot of panels and a lot of metallic bits on these guys that we had to paint but it's a slog but you get through it now once all those panels were painted, I watered down some nihalic oxide and I watered it down quite a lot. It flows really well and it dries really, really matte and interesting on the metallics. But however, it's not going to be too prominent. It looks pretty prominent now, but once it dries, it's not as really bright blue as there. And I think that's a good look. So I use it quite liberally, but with maybe one part nihilic oxide, two parts water, and I like the look that that gives. Once it dries, as as you can see, it's not too prominent. It's a little bit of silver dry brush on top of everything, just to get those brighter edges, those scratch marks and those bolts showing a little bit. And then the trim is finally done, and everybody can have a good old time because you feel happy that everything is accomplished and then you remember you put on a metric uh, boat ton of chains now let's do those in a quick really quick manner i'm gonna dry brush the same silver over the chains and my god they look super bright when you, once you do that but we're gonna figure something interesting out to darken them down and uh, instead of base painting them and then washing them we're just gonna dry brush over them even though it's got a different undertone who cares we're gonna add water to typhus corrosion not aqua shade this time why not i don't know i forgot it who knows 
and then we just gonna brush that typhus corrosion over the entire chain and it'll darken it down and also give it a little bit of grime underneath where the chain was lying against the plates which is fine next it's all the banners i put on and now we're going for a green theme which will go well with his eyes and we're starting out with this moss green and then putting auric flash and wet blending that into that moss castellan green and then you get these lovely lovely colors these colors are also great for nurgle models even though this is not technically a nurgle model it would look right at home in a nurgle army but i was not going for nurgle theme but it definitely has a little bit of a nurgle theme to it mainly because it's really disgusting and grimy now we're prepping for some uh, uh, some stickers on it, whatever they're called. Transfers. We started by putting some art coat underneath and then wetting a brush and wetting the transfers and sticking your finger in them so you can ruin them all because I'm an idiot and that's fun. Once that has dried, brush a little bit of Lamia Medium on top of it and that'll take the gloss away and seal it in there. Now the the transfers look really really white and that's not fun so i am gonna darken them down with a little bit of agrix earthshade i also put some bone white on all the skulls that are left on the model on the guns and on the even on the base and on all the armors and i'm just putting agrix earthshade over that as well willy-nilly okay we got the knight but we still have the big old base that I built to paint, so let's just do that real quick, and then this bastard is done. Now we're going really simple with the base, we're just dry brushing basically, it's a really wet dry brush to begin with, just to get some main colors going. Now why am I painting the tank green? Because it goes so well with his eyes. And also because a friend of mine, he really likes his salamanders. So when I have something space marine on my base, a dead space marine, a tank or something, I usually like to go for a salamander color just to be a nuisance. As I am. Let chaos reign, like I say. Now we're just going to start by dry brushing it with the dark green, the warpstone lightning. And then we're just going to use a little bit of Elysian green and we're doing this more in a dry brush manner. There's a lot less paint on the brush and we're just getting the highlights and the edges just to get some interest going. And you can paint this debris bases really quickly because they don't have to look nice. It's a base and it's ruins. And it's okay for it not to be perfect. It's a hell of a lot more interesting, just a flat ground with some tufts on it. So even though it looks like there's a lot going on, it's a really simple process to get done. Now, after I've done all the green bits, let's get some metallics going as well. And I'm also putting the metallics over the green bits because it's got a lot of scratches and grimes and dirt on it and rot and who knows what else is going on on that tank it's it's not in the best condition i mean you'd have to be a damn good car salesman to sell that crap so we're just putting a little bit of silver here and there and just to get a little bit more interest going on the entire tank and immediately once the silver hit it looks a bit more real it looks a bit more ruined a little bit more old and quite quite blasted and i like it I, it's one of my uh, one of the bases i'm most proud of now let's get some grime going of course and we're going to use agrax earthshade applied with a heavy hand we're using this so liberally it's it's almost disturbing I, the amount of agrax earthshade i put on this base is not healthy and I probably could have used less or something cheaper than almost an entire bottle of Agrax Earthshade on one model. But it is what it is and I did what I did and I stand by my decision. Next it's the actual ground of the base. We're starting out with uh, a dark grey and we're going to go over the entire ground bit with this, the rocks and the actual earth that I created around there. Now the rocks will get a little bit more extra oomph to them a little bit later on and the earth will get a different extra oomph to it but mainly it's the same heavy-handed wet-ish dry brush that goes over the entire ground to get that base color going with a little bit of undertone 
than a flayed one flesh. It's not a gray color. It's a more of a pale skin Caucasian color, but it works so well on rocks. So I'm going to dry brush that really softly on top of the rocks and you get these cold granite rocks going with that, which I really dig. It's a cool look uh, and uh, it juxtaposes well with the green that we have going there. And once we've, uh, let's put a little bit here on the ground and a little bit here on the grit and the grime. But next we're going to put some, you guessed it, Agrax Earthshade, the shade of this video. This video is sponsored by Agrax Earthshade. Not really though. And we're going to put that mainly on the ground, but a little bit, a dab here and there on the rocks, mainly to tie it all together. But we're not going to flood the rocks with it like we did with uh, the tank and the, what we're doing with the ground the rocks will just get a little bit just to deepen the shadows a little bit and here we have him and i really like how this turned out i mean it's no complex methods going around it's just slapping paint on it's a little bit of work but it was really really nice and i like how it looks the green and the brown and the dirt and the grime is just mwah, i like it anyway thank you very much for joining me here today there are links in the description for all kinds of stuff social media and various tidbits you do with it what you will like share and subscribe and hit that little bell thing and let the colors flow but until next time Farewell.